Hi, my name is Bertrand Dirk and today we'll be discussing about what menstrual migraine is. So, do you suffer from this condition or may think you suffer from menstrual migraines? If so, this video should explain into greater detail of what menstrual migraine is, as well as understanding the cause of this condition, as well as the potential treatment options to help combat, treat, alleviate, and hopefully resolve menstrual migraines for you. So, what is menstrual migraines? Now, firstly, menstrual migraines is actually ranked the top, the top five most disabling condition for women. And menstrual migraine affects women at different points throughout their menstrual cycle. Now, their migraines can typically peak either on the actual day of the cycle, a few days before the cycle, or a few days after the cycle, and can last anywhere up to a couple of hours or up to five days. Most commonly, will typically last for about three days. Now, migraine symptoms can be felt usually on one side of the head. We call it unilateral, being one side of the face. Um, sometimes it can switch from side to side, or occasionally it can be on both sides of the head. Now, the pain intensity can range from anywhere from moderate to severe pain scale level with more of a pulsating or throbbing type pain. In some cases, it can also cause the individual to feel sick, such as nausea. You may vomit from it as well. You may also become sensitive to the light, sound or smell during an attack. And usually it will leave migraine, menstrual migraine sufferers bedridden during the attack. Other symptoms that you may experience is either dizziness. You may have aura symptoms as well, which is visual disturbances. Typically, before the attack, you may see squiggly lines or flashes in the eye. Or even during attack, you may have double vision, tunnel vision, or you may even lose sight temporarily. All these symptoms can really affect a menstrual migraine sufferer. Not only can you feel the pain, but you can exhibit all these other symptoms which just amplify of how intense the entire condition will be. And usually for those severe menstrual migraine sufferers, as I said before, it can leave them bed bound where they can't go to school or they can't go to work. They have to go home and usually lock themselves up in a dark and quiet room. And that can really impact on the life of a sufferer, whereby they may have to stop the studies, or they may have to stop or quit work, or they may have been fired from work, or because of how debilitating this condition is. We also see so many menstrual migraine sufferers, whereby even their relationship breakdowns are broken because of this. And it is because sometimes their family members or their friends just don't understand what they actually go through. So, let's now talk about the types of menstrual migraines. There are two types. The first one is called pure menstrual migraine, and the second one is called menstrual related migraines. So let's go over what pure menstrual migraine is. Now, pure menstrual migraine is a migraine that typically occurs only one to three days before or after the menstruation. So again, Pure menstrual migraines only occur when the menstruation occurs. And these migraine attacks um, must occur during that time and no other time. To fulfill this diagnosis, the mi this migraine must occur more than 60% of your menstrual cycle. Pure menstrual migraines are less common than menstrual related migraines and occur in approximately 10% of women who suffer from migraines during the menstrual cycle. Hence, menstrual related migraines, which is a second class, is significantly more common. And this is related to migraines that once again occur one to three days before or after the menstruation, as well as additional migraines that can fall outside of the cycle. 
Now, menstrual-related migraines are more common than pure menstrual migraines, and once again, they must occur in more than 60% of your cycles. So then, let's talk about the cause. What is causing menstrual migraines? Now, the traditional and old theory of the cause of menstrual migraines was thought to be the changes in the hormonal levels in the body during the menstrual cycle. Now, typically during the cycle, there is a natural fall in estrogen levels at the beginning of the period. Now, this fall in hormonal estrogen levels was actually thought previously to trigger menstrual migraines. However, the changes in hormonal levels are actually, in fact, the same regardless whether a female suffers or does not suffer from menstrual migraines. In recent research performed by leading experts in this field have actually found that those suffering from menstrual migraines do not generally have any hormonal abnormalities. So, this indicates and proves that hormones are not responsible nor the cause of menstrual migraines. Furthermore, females experience menstrual migraines during the final stages of the period, a point where estrogen levels are actually rising. So, what is the cause then? Now, discoveries within recent research have found that the primary contributing factor of menstrual migraines to be actually related to the neck and predominantly a fault in the upper three cervical spine of the neck, which can then result into a sensitized brainstem. Now, when the brainstem becomes hypersensitive, irritable, it can then become highly sensitive to even small amounts of sensory or chemical changes to the body. In this case of menstrual migraine, it is thought, it is thought that the slight change in estrogen levels although it's perfectly normal, are interpreted by the sensitized brainstem as somewhat wrong with the body, which results in symptoms of migraine. Now, clinicians around the world are now beginning to actually point to the neck as the primary cause of migraines and have begun treating the cervical spine rather than prescribing medications or hormone replacement therapy drugs, including contraceptive pills. Now, this does not mean that treatment for menstrual migraine will have any impact on the contraceptive pill. So, now that we have a better understanding of the cause, and remember, the recent research shows that the brainstem is hypersensitive, and that is what is picking up the normal drop in estrogen levels during the cycle, which then thinks it's a threat because it's so hypersensitive, and then creates a pain into the head. So, if we now know the cause, can we actually now treat it? So, what are the treatment options? Again, a lot of females who we see try various things, so many medications to try and combat the pain, or hormone replacement therapy drugs, or the contraceptive pills, or even the marina that's injected into their body. All of these may help somewhat, but the question is, is it really treating the cause of the symptoms, or only treating symptoms and not the cause? So, my question to you is, if you are a menstrual uh, migraine sufferer, have you actually seen a headache consultant who has thoroughly assessed the neck and the brainstem to prove whether or not your menstrual related migraines are related to the brainstem itself? Now remember, if your brainstem has been proven and deemed to be the cause of your menstrual migraines, then treatment can actually begin straight away. Treatment is actually also very effective in combating menstrual migraines. If the cause is the brainstem, then treatment can begin to desensitize the brainstem. That means making the brainstem less sensitive, back to normal levels, which then means that when you do have the period, that it won't react with the brainstem, it won't hyper-excite the brainstem to then cause pain into the head. So, 
Once again, if you have not seen a headache consultant, then I would urge you to seek help from a headache consultant to assess the upper three vertebrae of the neck and assess the brainstem. And if it is a cause, then remember, treatment is available and treatment can begin to effectively help menstrual migraines once and for all. So, my name is Bertram Dirk and I hope you have found value in this video to not only understand what is migraine, the menstrual migraines, but also the cause and also the treatment options other than medications that yes, there is treatment available to now finally target the cause of menstrual migraines. Thank you once again for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you at another video. If you have any further questions, then feel free to comment below or even contact us through the channels below. Thank you. Thank you.